I'm going to show you basic cookie manipulation using Visual Studio's ASP.NET Core MVC. So I'm going to first create a new project. This will be an ASP.NET Core web app. And I'm going to call this one cookie test. And I create the project. Now, cookies are stored on your client side, but you can send information to the server to keep track of things like session ID. So what I'm going to do first is go into my controller. So I've got a default project. I've got a home controller right here. And in this default project, I'm going to add in a using statement. So using Microsoft.ASPNetCore.HTTP. And this will give me more of my cookie management things I need. Next thing I want to do is I want to go in here to my first method and for index and have it just display or send to the view information about what the cookie says. So I'm going to do a counter to count the number of times you go to a site. So I'll just update the visits counter and so first thing I need to do is get the counter so I'll do a visit or visit string and that is going to be equal to my request request cookies and I'm going to grab the visits cookie so there shouldn't be a visits cookie right now, but we'll go ahead and assume that there's going to be one in the future. And I'm going to have an integer to keep track of the number of visits. I'm going to set this one to zero for a nice low number. And then I'm going to do an int try parse. I'm going to try to parse out my visit string. String. And if I get it, I'm going to put it into my visits. So the first time I come through this site, I'm going to assume that my visits is, uh, well, one. So I'm going to have this counter set to zero. And then I can just increment it immediately afterwards. So visits plus plus. So now at this point, my visits number is going to be one for the first time, and it should increment every time after that if I set the cookie. And I'm not going to set the cookie right now. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and verify that it does, in fact, show that my visits is one. So I'll do a view bag and visits, and just set it equal to visits. So. Then I go over my view, and I've got this index view, and I can clear out all this stuff right here. And I'll just say um, visits view bag visits. And so just display the number of visits that I have so far. So I'll save that, and I will run it, and it will say one. No matter how many times I go to the page, it will just keep saying one because I'm not updating anything, not saving anything. So I click cookie test, and it just keeps saying visits one. Next, I'm going to go back to the controller, and I'm going to try to save it now. So in order to do that, I'm going to set my cookie. So I'll do a response cookies. And I'm going to uh, append a new cookie. And this one is going to be my visits cookie. And I'm going to give it the value of visits. And it needs to be a string. So to string. Now we're going to look at this and see what happens. So I'm going to run this. And then I see it says visits one. I click cookie test and it's incrementing it. However, 
I don't have it saving. It's kind of temporary. So as soon as I close the browser, the cookie is gone. I didn't save it and the cookie's not saving it anywhere else. So it's just there and it starts back at one again. But I want the cookie to last through browser closings. So what I do now is I modify this a little bit and I can add in some cookie options. So cookie options and my options are going to be a new cookie options and then i'm going to set some options the options i want is uh, an expiration date options expires equals let's do date time now and then we're going to add something to it so add days uh, days looks good and we'll do 365 days so this cookie will only last for 365 days except it gets renewed every time and then i go down here and i add one more option in here or the options and then it will save my options and it'll set it in a cookie that's going to last for 365 days instead of until the browser closes if you want it to be expiring when the browser closes, you can leave out the options and just do just the cookie name and value, the key and the value, which is good for things like bank accounts when you don't want to save your information. All right, so now I go ahead and save this and I run it. This time it should start with one, just like before. I click a few times, it's up to 10, I close it and I run it again. And this time it should retrieve the 10 and then add one. So it should be 11. So you can see now it's 11. And an update as well. If I wanted to delete my cookie, so let's say I want to start over again, I can do that as well. So I can do response. Response cookies. And I can do a delete. And I have to tell it the name of the cookie, which is visits. And that will delete the cookie. So then I can go ahead and run. It'll say the number of visits previously, 18. However, when I reload it, it deletes it. And so it starts back at one again. So the cookie is no longer there. If I go ahead and comment this out, and then uncomment these lines again right here. Then the cookie will start with one and will increment up to whatever number I need. Now with this knowledge, all you need to do is just be able to create a cookie. And this cookie could be anything. You don't have to increment it. You don't have to modify it. It doesn't have to be a counter. You could have a session key you could retrieve that from a database you could create it automatically and then just set it and keep it there and then if it's not set you could set it and create a new one and then every time someone comes there you can use the database to retrieve information about that individual to keep track of them but this is how you manage cookies how you can retrieve the cookies um, write the cookies, and delete the cookies.